Hola a todos and welcome to What in the World. I'm Monica Hernandez and today I'm greeting you in Spanish because we are taking a trip to Mexico and talking about its geography, holiday of the month, popular sport, tourist attractions and language. So don't go anywhere, the show starts now. What is Mexico like? How large is the population? Is it always hot? Let's break down its geography. Mexico is the southernmost point of North America, and it's bordered by the United States in the north, Guatemala and Belize in the south, the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean Sea in the east, and the Pacific Ocean in the west. There are 31 states plus its capital, Mexico City. Do you know how large the population is? Mexico City alone has a population of over 21 million people, making it the fourth most populated city in the world. That's two and a half times more than New York City. That's crazy. Overall, Mexico's population reaches an all-time high of 127 million people. That explains why Mexico is also the world's largest population of Spanish speakers. Okay, so we have a lot of people living in Mexico. Now, how are they dealing with the hot temperatures all year round? Actually, that's a common misconception about Mexico. Yes, it can be hot in some areas like the Yucatan Peninsula where Cancun is, and in other places like the Sonora Desert of Baja California and the Langandona Jungle in Chiapas. But Mexico's topography is vastly diverse. Altitudes are as high as 18,000 feet up in Pico de Orizaba and as low as negative 32 feet in Laguna Salada. The range in altitude throughout the country influences the difference in temperatures. The lowest average is 19 degrees Fahrenheit and the highest average is 95 degrees Fahrenheit. So always remember to check the weather to be prepared. September is a big month for Mexico because it marks its independence from Spain. Unfortunately, Cinco de Mayo is not Mexico's Independence Day. Actually, Cinco de Mayo marks the victory over the French in the Battle of Puebla. So now that we've cleared up the dates, let's talk about the history of September 16th. It all started when Hernán Cortés sailed to Mexico in 1519 and tried to overthrow the Aztec Empire's ruler, Moctezuma. The Aztecs succeeded in getting the Spanish out of Tenochtitlán, but Cortés made his way back in 1521 and this time he defeated the indigenous people and Mexico became a Spanish colony. Spain's control remained the same for about 300 years until a Catholic priest changed history. On September 16, 1810, Miguel Hidalgo y Costilla gathered the people of Mexico outside his church in Dolores Hidalgo, Guanajuato, where he rang a bell and gave the first Grito de Dolores or Cry of Dolores. Spain was not happy about this and fought the Mexican rebels for 11 years. Hidalgo was executed following a battle loss in Puente de Calderón, but he is remembered as a brave leader who changed Mexico forever. His efforts and the efforts of the Mexican rebels resulted in the Cordoba Treaty, which recognized Mexico's independence and the end of the war. Today, the Mexican people gather each year on September 15 at 11 p.m. at the heart of Mexico City, known as the Zócalo, where the president gives the same grito that Hidalgo did in 1810. And of course, no Independence Day is complete without a celebration. There's a fireworks show after the grito, then on September 16, people come out to watch the military parade. Last but not least, we can't forget the traditional Mexican food. Some of the most popular Independence Day meals are chiles en nogada, pozole, tostadas preparadas, nopales, tamales, chiles rellenos, and pollo con mole poblano. Anyone else hungry now? Who's ready for some football? Here in the US, it's called soccer, but in Mexico, it's always football, or foot for short. It's the most popular sport in the country, and it is played at all levels. But today, we're only going to talk about the professional tier, known as Liga MX. Liga MX is made up of 19 different teams, and not every player is Mexican. There are players from Ecuador, Argentina, Colombia, and many other countries. There are also Mexicans who play for foreign teams like Javier Hernandez, and by the way, we're not related, who is part of the Sevilla Football Club in Spain. 
Another thing you should know about Javier Hernandez is that he's a great football player, which is why he was selected to play for Mexico's national team. Only the best make the team and get to play in the FIFA World Cup every four years or any time the team goes up against another national team. I actually got the chance to go to a game against the US early this month in East Rutherford, and I highly recommend going to one. There's a lot of energy from the fans. Check it out. It's a fun experience to say the least, and the good news is, in 2026, the World Cup will be held in a united bid by Canada, Mexico, and the United States. So mark your calendars, folks! So now that we know a little bit more about Mexico, let's talk about some of the best places to visit. If your ideal vacation is exploring the city, then check out Mexico City. Go watch a play, listen to an orchestra or an opera, or walk around the art exhibit and see a wide range of sculptures or paintings from notable Mexican artists like Diego Rivera at the Palacio de Bellas Artes. Learn more about Mexico's history at the Zócalo. Does that place sound familiar? That's where Mexicans gather for Independence Day. But aside from that, the Zócalo offers other attractions, like the Catedral Metropolitana, the oldest and largest cathedral in Latin America. There's also the National Palace, which tourists can tour from inside and get a glimpse of the beautiful Mexican architecture and historical murals painted by Diego Rivera. Speaking of architecture, make sure to visit the beautiful Castillo de Chapultepec to learn more about its history and enjoy the amazing view of the city from the terrace. And for museum lovers out there, spend a day in Misión Sumaya. The museum is home to more than 60,000 works from Central America and Europe. And did I mention how aesthetically pleasing the building is? Those are just a few places to visit in the city. There is more to see beyond Mexico City, like the Chichen Itza Pyramid in the state of Yucatan, the Monarch Butterfly Reserve in the state of Michoacán, which, by the way, is a photographer's dream, and the Cave of Crystals in the state of Chihuahua, where the largest crystals ever are found. So, where will you travel? You're almost ready to visit Mexico, but it's safe to know a few keywords and phrases in case you come across a person who doesn't speak English. Hola. ¿Cómo estás? Bien, ¿y tú? Con permiso. Disculpe or perdón. Sí. No. Gracias. De nada. Por favor. ¿Dónde está el baño? ¿Puedo usar el baño? Necesito direcciones para mi hotel. Siga derecho y el hotel está a mano derecha. Izquierda. Derecha. Semáforo. Mucho gusto. Buenos días. Buenas tardes. Buenas noches. ¿Cómo te llamas? Me llamo Mónica. ¿Me puede dar una botella de agua, por favor? ¿Me puede dar una servilleta, por favor? Cubiertos. Cuchara. Tenedor. Cuchillo. Plato. Cerveza. Vino. Café. Helado. ¿Qué hora es? ¿Cuánto cuesta? La cuenta, por favor. Banco. Cajero automático. 
autobús, metro, boletos, calle. You're ready, my friend. Now go show off those Spanish skills. That's all we have for today. Tune in next time as we travel to India. But until then, this has been What in the World. I'm Monica Hernandez. Hasta la próxima, viajeros.